It's a new day. Let's get on with it. Insight. Stories of modern man's search for meaning. Freedom. Love. Insight. All of us are prepping for the final exams, but some of us are closer to the moment of truth than others. What does it take to pass those exams? I mean, what can give meaning to a human life? What can make it successful? Some people act as if money is the answer. Others pour their time and energy into the acquisition of power or prestige or pleasure. These things are certainly good, but are they good enough? Can they give us the fulfillment and happiness we desire? I don't think so. I think love is the answer. Love for ourselves, love for our brother human beings, love for the God who is the ground of all of our being. In the evening of life, St. John of the Cross says, we shall be judged upon love. What is love? Is it good for us to love ourselves? If so, how does that differ from selfishness? And is it possible to love another human being? What does that entail? If loving means sharing and caring and feeling with, that means we can get hurt. Why should we take the risk? Is it worth it? What happens to us when we do try to love? Inside, I mean. And what does our love do for those to whom we give it? Is love all it's cracked up to be? If so, how do you and I learn how to love? How are you? Fine, dear, fine. Everything all right? Perfect, perfect. concentrate here. That's $5,000 I lost already this morning. How could you lose $5,000? You're playing by yourself. So I lost it to myself. But to yourself, you don't have to pay any money. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I pay off. Unger loses, Unger pays. 74 years. I never owed nothing to nobody. You're actually going to pay yourself $5,000. If I have to, I will. Fortunately, I'm going to give myself a chance to win it back with Blackjack. Oh. <laughs> but for Blackjack, you need at least two people to play. Why? Nonsense. I deal... I deal for both. For me, to myself. For me, to myself. <laughs> ah, here we are. Now, I bet $5,000. I thought you're supposed to bet before you take a look at the cards. By whose rules? Any rules. Are there Las Vegas? Is this Las Vegas? This is Florida, so what? <laughs> Florida, I still bet $5,000. <laughs> rules are rules. Doesn't matter, I got 18. How do you like that, 20? Well, now you, you owe yourself $10,000. Now, right? this is only the beginning. Only the beginning <laughs> says that's not gambling. <laughs> oh, losing $10,000 is not gambling. This is gambling. The stock market, that's gambling. In 1955, I had $563,000 in the stock market. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah. So where is it? Well, uh, well, well, half of it my wife still has. And the other half? Well, the other half is now less. How much less? Much less. Cavaretta, how much have you got on the stock market? $450. $450? That's not gambling. No, it isn't. What is it? It's philanthropy. Ah. Cavaretta. Yes? I got advice for you. Yes. What is your advice? Get out of the market. Ah.
Hello. Hello, Carl. Professor. Oh, what if? It's good to be alive. You're so right. Some good. I owe ten thousand dollars already. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Sixty-nine years young. Ten wine likes are still good. Ah, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Rouch. How are you this morning? Uh, Mr. Khan. Uh, how's the hand? I I felt a little something this morning. Yes, where? In a palm, a little tingling. Oh, that's wonderful! Uh, it's coming back. Uh, I told you. How can he talk to her? I can't even look at her. Well, she's got compassion. When you've had cancer, you learn. I'd rather be dead. <laughs> I'd rather be dead. That's what she says. But it's not true. Nobody would rather be dead. I know. I speak from experience. It's, it's easy for you to say. You had cancer, and now you don't have it. And how old is he? Only 69. He's a baby boy. Yeah. You're only as old as you feel. <laughs> as old as you feel, sweetheart. <laughs> ah, Mr. Weber, good morning. Gentlemen. <coughs> Mr. Moneybag. Yeah, he keeps to himself. He's a lonely man. He's too good man. for us. Well, with his money, he can afford to be lonely. Nobody can afford to be lonely. Well, maybe he hasn't got a family. He's got a son and a daughter-in-law. Well, they never write to him. With money, you don't need nobody. I think he would like to hear from them, but they forgot. He's easy to forget. You could drop dead right in front of him. He wouldn't even pick you up. Oh, he'd dust you off with his paper a little bit, but he wouldn't pick you up. Hunger, the cynic. Huh? Mr. Weber, how are you this morning? You're a noisy man, Professor. A little noise is good. Clears the lungs. Oh, I missed you at breakfast this morning. I want you to join me for lunch. I'm sorry, about We'll I'm have not... a salad. A salad is good for the bowels. Now, Professor, I'll I... pick you up in your room. <sighs> Good for the bowels. He doesn't go to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom just as you do, Anger. He goes to bed just as you do, and he has dreams just as you do. Khan, Khan, he, he has no worries. Now, why should he dream? What could he dream? I think he dreams about business, and that's very sad. Why is that sad? Because, Anger, he's old, and he doesn't have a business. I was just on my way. Come in. Oh. Picasso? It's just a print. Ah. Oh. The original is worth a quarter of a million dollars. How would you know? Picasso told me when he gave it to me. Picasso gave you? And you got it? My son has it in the vault. Picasso. He used to buy music from my store. You had a store? Oh, Khan, it was the most famous music store in the country. Oh, well, I'm not a musician, but I could tell you are. Hmm? Your hands. My hand? You have very musical hands. Oh, beautiful. Piano hands? Well, thank you very much. I. I used to play the piano a long time ago. I could tell. <laughs> Khan, music has made me a lot of money. Huh? Well, I was a professor. I never made any money. I'm sorry. You missed something. Missed? No. I had students, friends. Look, letters from all over the world. Israel, Paris, New York, New York, California. 
My daughter lives in California. Oh, which reminds me, speaking of children... But don't mention children to me. Why not? Children are a blessing. Weber, I have a surprise for you. A letter for you. Lawrence Weber, that's your boy. Hmm. Aren't you going to read it? I'll read it later. But it's from your son. Such a son. He's ruining a business that took me 35 years to build. He's driving it into the ground. He's not a businessman, he's a musician. Well, you're a musician. You still are. Once a musician, always a musician. I had a gift, but I haven't played in, in years. Well, there's a piano downstairs. I'm sure they would all love to hear you play. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous? They're all old people. They're bored. They just sit around and stare. I know they would welcome some music. My music has always been a very private thing with me. I could uh, never give of myself easily. I, I'm, I'm a very private person. Picasso gave you a painting. I understand he was a very private person, too. Professor Kahn, let's go to lunch. Ah. Thank you very much, Mrs. Soames. Lovely flower, Mr. Wilson. Why, thank you. Coming, Kahn? Ah, Mr. Kahn, I noticed you're feeding Mrs. Rausch breakfast yesterday morning. You are a very kind person. She'll be feeding herself soon. You'll see. Oh, I don't think she'll ever be using her hand again. Mrs. Soane, where there's life, there's hope. Mr. Kahn, I got a letter from your daughter yesterday. She's a lovely girl. She's concerned about your stomach. You know you're not well. I don't think you should be straining yourself with all this exercising. I'm fine. The, doc the doctor says I got another year. And believe me, it's going to be a good year. <laughs> George, you haven't touched your food. I'm waiting for Garcia. Ah, and how is Mr. Garcia? Oh, he's better. Uh, Every minute he gets better and better. Wonderful, George. That's wonderful. <laughs> we may even get in a game of shuffleboard later. Maybe. He, yes. Oh, that'll be good for him. But, George, you shouldn't let your food get cold. Cold food is bad for the digestion. Oh, yes, uh, you may be right. And uh, the spinach is especially good. Make you like Popeye, <laughs> strong. <laughs> yes, you, you're you quite right. Mm. Garcia doesn't sleep much. Keeps me up. Uh, eat, eat, eat. Mr. Cavaretta, how is the stock market? Awful, awful. I'm thinking of selling my steel. <laughs> He's thinking of selling his steel. He should be out of the market at his age. A game of cards later, Con. Ah, oh, Unger, you play too much cards. Later, we'll go for a walk on the beach. It'll be good for you. Oh, Mrs. Rouch. <laughs> That's right. Chew it good. 25 times, then swallow. Yes, Mr. Con. Still have the tingling? Oh, yes, yes. I, in my fifth finger, I can feel it. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I told you it'd be coming back. Oh. oh, Mr. Weber, you picked a nice table. I like to sit near the window and see the sky. You're a very gregarious man, Khan, but these people aren't worth your attention. Weber, when you get older, you need a little attention. Hey, Cavaretta, he plays the stock market. It doesn't matter whether he makes money or loses money. It gives him something to talk about. And, and Unger, with all his sarcasm and his arguments and his cynicisms, he plays cards just to make contact. George Posnack, he's been rooming with Garcia for two years. They each had nobody but each other. They, they ate together. They always played shuffleboard together. And now, Garcia's dying. And George can't face it. He, he won't face it. He's aging before our eyes. 
He sees his contact slipping away. Sad. Well, Khan. Unger. As we get older, we lose many things. Friends, position, family. Well, what should he lose? He don't have friends, he don't have position, and his family don't care about. So what's he got to lose? Hunger, he lost his money. He lost his money. You haven't been down in two days. Everyone is asking about you. Listen, Weber, it's not the end of the world. I read the letter. You had no right. I was concerned for you. I suppose everybody here in the house knows about it. That the store is closed. And that my son has been sending me money to live and that he no longer can do so. Yes, they know that. Terrific. Boy, they must be having a good laugh on me. <laughs> Weber, nobody is laughing. You show them the letter, huh? huh? Weber, we have a common bond among us here. We're all together. I have nothing in common with them and, and they have nothing in common with me. You're wrong. We have age in common. We are all old. I lost everything. Don't you understand? Everything. They had nothing to lose. Nobody here had any money. I never had anything but money. Money? Weber, that's the easiest thing to lose. And besides, you still have the Picasso. You said yourself it was worth a quarter of a million dollars. Weber. The Picasso is gone. I told you a lie. The Picasso went three years ago. The store. It was all that I had left of the things that ever meant anything to me. The, the, the finer thing. Nothing is left. No, nothing. Oh, yet. Weber, Weber. <laughs> The finer things are all inside you. <laughs> there's nothing fine inside of me. Inside of me, there's only emptiness. Look, I'm, I'm 73 years old and I've lost everything. I'm, I'm too old to, to start all over again. And I, I just can't adjust to being poor. Weber, there's a human being inside of you that you have never found, or perhaps you've lost along the way. There's a life you've never lived. Oh, come, Weber, look. 
Outside your window, there's an ocean with a distinctive odor finer than all the musty smells of all the finest art galleries in the world. See the gull hanging in the sky in a manner more miraculous than any mobile calder ever created. No, nobody wants me. How would you know? Whom did you ever give the chance? Come on, Weber. Pull yourself together. Money isn't important. You are. Just try to give a little bit of yourself. And maybe, just maybe, the best part of life may be ahead. It'll do you good. Oh, Mr. Khan, it's too tiring. So we'll walk slowly. Look, I got Cavaretta away from his newspapers, and I got Unger up from the table and his cards, and George Posnack is coming. Maybe I better wait for Garcia. We'll meet Garcia for lunch. Come on, Mrs. Roush. Come on. Coming, coming. What do you say? Get the blood moving. It's good for your hand. You got to keep up the circulation. No, thank you, Mr. Khan. I think I'll just sit here for a while. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> ah, but is that a promise? Yes, if I feel well enough. <laughs> okay, okay, if you feel well enough. But you will join me for lunch when I get back. Oh, I'd be very pleased to, Mr. Khan. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Roush, I stopped by Mr. Weber's room and asked him to come along on the walk, and he said he wanted to get dressed, but maybe he changed his mind. So if he should come down, would you ask him to join us for lunch? I will. I will. Good. Good. Well, gentlemen, are we ready for a nice brisk walk along the beach? Oh, God. Shut up, Unger. Are you all right, Professor? I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, then lead the way, Professor. George. Not too fast. Not too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I disturbed you. Johann Strauss? Yes. Oh, I love Strauss. I used to play that. You did? You played piano? When I was young, little girls played the piano. But I haven't played in years. I haven't played either. <laughs> I still have the piano my father gave me. You do? Yes, but I can't play it anymore. Oh, would you play something else? All right. I, I'll play some Viennese music for you, all right? If, if you don't mind if I butcher it. No, I all don't right? mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's a lovely flower you're wearing. You like it? Yeah. Oh, no. Please, please have it. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome, my dear. You're welcome.
site is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who seek to share the good news of God's love with all their brothers and sisters in the human family.